Hey beautiful souls, beautiful sunshine here with the Arlistic Healer. I am back with another prophetic message. And I just want to say for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. And let's get right into the message. Oh, keep in mind if you're new to the channel, um, I just ask that you guys hit the subscribe button so that you can receive any updated prophetic messages that I receive um, as I update them or upload them to YouTube. Um, with all that being said, keep in mind too that these energies could be happening right now, could be happening two weeks out, or could be happening a month away, near future, however you want to, you know, proceed it to be going. Um, because energy is always flowing. So with that being said, um, let's get into the latest prophetic message. Okay, so first of all, I want to say this. I saw this, I, and let me say this as well too. If you're new to the channel, I've basically said in every other video too that when I receive a message, I do not know specific locations um, unless Divine Spirit of Light gives me um, direct locations. Um, what, uh, how can I say it? Unless Divine Spirit like gives me specific location, times, dates, or, you know, months, or, you know, whether it says years, or um, whether it be day, whether it be nighttime, um, sometimes those messages are kind of clear. Well, not clear. Sometimes I'm giving those messages, sometimes I'm not giving those messages. So I do not know who these messages apply for. So as you listen to it, just take what resonates and whatever doesn't resonate, just store it in the back of your file cabinet, in the back of your subconscious mind. It could be a situation of maybe you're not dealing with this situation or maybe someone close to you is dealing with this situation. So with all that being said, let's get right into the message. So this message, uh, this first message I saw, um, it was as if someone lived in a high rise building um, again, I can't tell you where the location is at, but someone lived in a high rise building is from what I saw. They stayed up at the very top of the floor. I'm not going to say it's a penthouse, but it was up at the very top of the, the last floor in the high rise building. Well, apparently this building, um, needs some sort of type of renovations. And it was as if I went to visit her and she had and I saw, we got off the elevator and I noticed that there was like a big square hole in the floor that was near the elevator. And I was looking at that like, you know, um, that's kind of dangerous because I knew she had a child also too. Um, her child wasn't there at the time when I went to go visit her, but I knew she had a child. So I was thinking to myself, that was dangerous. So I asked her, I said, well, why didn't you get them to fix that? And she said, well, they was gone to before I moved in, but I needed to move in right away. So I guess they never got around to fixing it. I guess once she had um, already decided to move in. So with that being said, um, for whoever this message may resonate with, um, that might have been a situation that was, you know, that might have been your circumstances at the time with needing to move in. But I think now it's time for you to speak up and, you know, let the landlord know that that hole needs to be fixed because I didn't see anything bad happening. But just the mere fact that you have a child or whatever, you know, um, you know, yeah. So just keep that in mind. We don't want any incidents to happen. So just keep that in mind, too. And also, I think the other thing was, too, she had mentioned that her landlord said that if she gets it fixed, that she was going to have to move. Uh, she was going to have to not necessarily re relocate, but she was going to have to spend some time away from her from her apartment, excuse me. And she didn't want to have to spend time away from her apartment because that she knew that she wasn't going to have any means of transportation to get to work. And because that location where she was at is right there near her job somewhere. And um, I mentioned to her, well, why didn't she ask a friend of hers? Um, apparently it was as if I knew this person, but I really don't know this person. But basically she had, um, I, I asked her, why didn't she ask her friend? And she said that she didn't want her friend to have to come all the way out here out of her way just to take and drop her off at work. Besides, she didn't know if her friend was going to do that anyway. But for whoever you are, again, um, you should make it a point to go ahead and let them fix that and try to work out the situation some way, shape or form, just because, you know, not only yourself, but you know, you have a child too. So, but with all that being said, let's move right along to the next message. So, uh, this next message is dealing with a situation. It was as if I was kind of communicating with somebody, um, let's just say we was in different parts of the house and I knew I needed to vacuum the floor in a sense. I'm going somewhere with this message, so just don't take it as if it's just me because this energy could be happening to some of you. 
So it was as if I knew I said to myself, I had a list of things that I needed to do and vacuum the floor was one. And I said to myself that I needed to vacuum the floor where it just so happened that it's almost like I was communicating with my daughter telepathically and she was down on the next level. And basically I had heard the vacuum cleaner going and then I came down to tell her, oh, I said, oh, I was going to get that. Um, I basically told her, oh, I was going to get that. But she said she had already got it. So some of you may be dealing with a situation that you may find yourself um, saying certain things to yourself and other people picking up on your energy. In a sense, it's it's almost like you're tapping in to uh, telepathic communication with uh, loved ones who, you know, are could be everybody's situation is going to be different. Could be somebody within your household, could be somebody with outside of your household. But just know that some of you going to start communicating with people telepathically. That's the second message. So the third message I had was this was for someone. This was kind of weird. This is like two messages in one. So it was as if I was taking a walk up, you know, like how in California they have those little trails up near the Hollywood sign. It was as if I was on a trail kind of like that. It started out like it was going up high. And I was like, whoo, that hill is very high. And then it got to the point that the trail kind of started to change a little bit as I was walking up the hill. It started becoming more and more complicated. So I had noticed that as I went up more, as I was walking my dog, it became not so much of a trail anymore but it became more of a cliff and i'm standing like you know it was probably like this is the rock part of the cliff and this is more like the cliff from like here to here so i had like this much space to really walk and i started becoming a little fearful i felt like in the dream but and then when i realized it I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I looked down and it seemed like it was so far away when I looked down. Then I, I knew I couldn't go back because I, if I, I, I tried to go a little forward and I couldn't do that. And I couldn't go back because it's like everything had changed um, as I had walked forward. So I tried to call myself walk backwards. I couldn't do that. So it got to the point I said, okay, I need to climb down. So the little bit of space that I had from here to here, I was taking it and I took and uh, decided that I was going to climb down. Well, I had, I was hanging on like this. I remember hanging on like that. And then all of a sudden, at this point in time, I didn't even know where my dog went, but I didn't feel like anything happened to her. But, <laughs> um, but I was hanging off the side of, I felt like was a cliff. And when I realized it, when I realized that I had looked down, like I said, the first time I looked down, it looked like it was really, really far away if I was to let myself go. But and then I realized it and I looked again and I just decided to jump. And when I jumped and fell, I was like, oh, that wasn't even as far away as I thought it was. So some of you may be dealing with a situation that you feel like something is really, really complicated for you. Take it how it resonates. For me, it was just making it seem like as if that situation became complicated as a way to get the message through. Some of you may be dealing with the situation that things may seem a little complicated, but they're really not as complicated as you think it is. It may seem like it's really, really far away and it really is closer than what you think it is. So that was one message in in that uh in this third message. There's another message also that I actually saw within this message. So once I had claimed that it kind of skipped scenes. Once I had realized that the ground wasn't as far as I thought it was, I walk into this building that was nearby. And need I remind you to build what the building was not there at first. So I walk into the building and it was as if like there was like a conference table inside inside this this building. And, and it was like really, really, you know how you go into like a welcoming center and there's like really big glass windows. That's kind of what it seemed like walking into like a welcome center, except they didn't have all the pamphlets laying around or brochures. It was just a table. It was a table that was in there. And I thought to myself, I was like, oh, you know, when I walked in and I saw a lady, she posted a chair up against the door. I didn't understand what that meant. She posted a chair up outside the door inside the building. And she also posted a chair up outside the door, outside of the building. I just looked at her. I was like, why is she doing that? But anyway, so I just kept on moving. I said, let me mind my own business. But with all that being said, um, I remember it kind of switched scenes when I was in there. So it was as if this employer, so... It was as if this employer was looking for help. So these people who was in there, I remember there was a lady and there was a man, there was myself that kind of walked in after I 
kind of jumped off the little small cliff that I thought was really high. Um, she was filling out some paperwork at the table and the man was kind of walking around. I guess he was about to fill out some paper as well too. So it was as if it switched scenes once I was inside and it was as if the uh, lady was hiring for help. And because she was hiring for help, um, it was as if she kind of hired me on for the position as if I had gotten a job. And I remember her saying that I need you to do this, 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 and that. Um, because she, she, it's almost like she had a, I don't know if I want to say a training. She had something important that was going on and she needed like these little mouse pads. I guess she was doing like for promotion work that she was giving away to, to people, um, to her clients, she was giving this away to her clients. So she needed me in a dream to kind of go pick those up for her. Be she ordered them, she needed me to go pick them up. So it was kind of almost as if she hired me on as like a personal assistant or something like that. You know, if this situation is resonate with any of you, but she hired, but everybody's situation is going to be different. So she hired me on for the position. And I remember telling her, okay, I said, well, you know, I looked at the clock and I was like, well, it's almost lunchtime. So it's, you know, I said, I can pick that up. Either I can pick it up before I go get something to eat or I can pick it up after I'm done eating. So with that being said, I left the building. I left the building and at this point in time, it switched scenes again, but yet it was the still same story, the, the same story, excuse me. So need I remind you, but need I remind you, this individual who I'm referring to, and again, take it how it resonates because everybody's situation is going to be different. This individual was somebody that had gotten hired on, but they were once unemployed is what I saw because I actually saw the ledger book. You know, I don't know if they still do this now. I don't even know with this whole um this 19 thing going on um i don't know if they are still having people i'm sure it's probably the old way of doing things but i remember one point in time when i was unemployed um after we had to uh close uh our child care business back in the day um i had filed for unemployment and back then this was like the early 2000s i want to say like early 2000s like, no, I'm sorry, like probably 2003 or something like that. Well, back then they had the little books where you used to have to write down or you, every person, every employment place that you called, you used to have to write that down in, um, in your little ledger book saying where you look for work at, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I saw somebody's ledgers book, um, of all the lift, the different, places uh so that just lets me know that this person was was once unemployed who i'm referring to who actually was supposed to pick up the ladies uh mouse pads for her but with that being said i'm not trying to confuse you guys so please bear with me um and then after i left the building it was as if i kind of wandered off and ended up somewhere else kind of running into someone else um just talking to them briefly but then i noticed that as it gotten a little darker at this point in time i realized it was darker so i don't know if this person is actually someone who is actually close to this boss like again everybody's situation could be different it could be a um you know maybe a spouse or something who just kind of stepped in to help out or maybe it was just somebody that she just hired on because in the end close to the end what had happened was it was like it hadn't gotten dark. I didn't pick up any of the items that she had asked. So I, I walked into the house as if I kind of played with the kid. But this was her house or their house. I'm not sure whose house it was. But anyway, I played with the kid for a little bit. And then I noticed that the lady who I was supposed to pick up her stuff, she was drinking like a glass of wine. And it was just how she was looking. Like I knew she was, you know, it was like, you know, kind of you know, like upset. I knew that she was upset. This person didn't say anything to her and she didn't say anything to him. She just sipped on her wine. And at this point in time, I remember hearing, it was just as if she, as if I heard, uh, I heard the conversation was almost like telepathically. So basically in the dream, he didn't say, uh, it was as if I didn't say anything. I just knew how she felt but I also said to myself, but I didn't say it out loud. I said, okay, well, let me go get her stuff because I see that she's upset because I was supposed to get it. I didn't get it. And then not only that, but um, I said to myself, let me go get it. 
and I'm sorry y'all bear with me I told myself let me go get her stuff and that I was willing to go above and beyond and pass her stuff out to those individual people who she wanted to um, give those particular gifts to so again this situation is going to resonate differently from different people, but obviously somebody has going to be in a situation that they was once unemployed, whoever it is, spouse, friend, you know, somebody taking on a job um, after receiving unemployment is what I saw. Um, but obviously they're not really taking the job seriously. But at the same time, the owner of the business realizes that also that if you want something done, that you're going to have to do it yourself and not necessarily depend on other people to do it for you. So, sorry guys, I know that was a little complicated, but I have to give it to you how I saw it. Um, this one is, okay, this one is the last one. This was a little complicated, so I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible. Okay, so this man, I'm not sure if he had just came home from, uh, jail is what I possibly got. He just came home in some way, shape, or form. Um, apparently he had been gone for a while. Where he was at, I don't really know, so I don't want to, again, everybody's situation is gonna be different. So I kind of got it like as if he just came home from jail or whatever, um, but he could have been gone on a road trip. He could have been going somewhere else. I don't know, but I got it as if this individual is in a relationship with somebody. So please bear with me. It's going to get a little complicated. He was in a relationship with somebody. Okay. This is like a third party situation. So let me say that and make it clear. This is a situation of somebody is in a relationship. Okay. He was sitting there talking to one of his friends and as he was sitting there talking to one of his friends, he was saying, man, oh man, he was like, I'm home. He was like, he said, I want to, um, I want to go dancing with my, uh, hang out with my fellas. And then I thought to myself, I was like, do men dance? <laughs> That's what I was saying in the dream to myself. But anyway, um, nevertheless, he told his friend that he wanted to go dancing and he wanted to hang out with his fellas. He said he didn't want to hang out with no girls. He was like. I just want to go hang out with my fellas and his friend who was sitting in the same room as him he was sitting there and he told him he said he said he had said or or um he basically told him he was like you he basically said you want to hang out with your fellas in other words because he was like are you sure like he was like yeah i don't want to hang out with no girls i just want to hang out with my fellas because this it's like I could read his mind telepathically. He was saying, his friend had actually said, are you sure? Because every time you say that, it ends up being the opposite. <laughs> but anyway, with that being said, so they was just sitting there talking. He was like, yeah, I just want to hang out with my boys. I just want to go dancing. But anyway, so and then lo and behold, after the conversation, friend was just sitting there listening to him and he made his comment because he knows how he is. Um, he was sitting there. And he said, yeah, not with any girls. But then yet, a girl appears behind him or sitting off to the side, sitting very close to him. Let me just say that. Just a little off to the side of him, but kind of a little behind his back a little bit. There was a girl on a couch with him. And then all of a sudden, he ends up calling another girl on his phone. And he was FaceTiming her. And I saw this so clearly. Like, this girl was working out like maybe in a home type gym or something like that. She had like a tattoo near her, her hair, her shirt was kind of one of those crop, not too crop, you know, one of those gym shirts that's a little short, but it's not a crop top, but it's, you know, a little above the belly button. So I saw a tattoo on the back of her back. Um, she had some weights in her hands as if she was trying to put the weights back on the rack, the bar or whatever, as she was talking to him. So I don't know if she had posted her phone up um, so she can see him, but she was moving around and she was hands free as she was talking to him. But anyway, so the girl was sitting behind him and then he called another girl that was on the phone. So he told the girl on the phone to say hi to his other friend who was sitting right next to him. And need I remind you to me, I didn't get the energy that this was friendship. It, it, it's friends with benefits. If you ask me, that's the energy that I got. And the reason why I say that is because when he told the girl on the phone to say hi to his other friend, the two of them, and, and, and I felt their energy, they was like, it was almost like they felt some type of way about each other. Like, yeah, you may be sitting there next to him, but uh-huh, he calling me while you sitting there. So it, it's drama. 
that let me just say that it's just drama so with all that being said um neither one of them really wanted to say uh they tried to keep it cordial they both said spoke to each other but it was just their tone and how they said it they really didn't want to speak to each other but with all that being said um that's right as they were done you know saying hi to each other all i heard was the divine spirit of light saying is until until you do right by and i get a confirmation uh a notification anyway until you do right by again neither one of these females that he was talking to the one on the phone and the one sitting next to him none of them was his spouse okay he was in a relationship i got the energy that he was in a relationship but neither one of those people uh, persons that he was talking to he was not in relationship with them these were people that he had you know friends with benefits so divine spirit of light i heard him saying right before i had woken up from that dream until you do right by you know your spouse you know basically and, and i hate to say this but it is what it is i don't shoot the messengers i'm just delivering the message until you do right by your spouse or whatever um basically everything you do is gonna fail it's you know take it how it resonates different people are going to have different situations some people may be a relationship some people it could be another situation um so just know that if you're not standing in your morals your values or having values having integrity and you're not treating people the way you would want to be treated um that message is applying to you so again the divine spirit of light is trying to have people to get them to stand in more integrity okay so again i'm just delivering a message it's and if you forget what i said just result back to the movie color purple to be honest with you when it said when uh was it miss silly when she said um when she pointed the hand at him and she said until you do right by me everything you do is gonna fail so that's not me saying that. I'm just telling you. In case you forget what I'm saying, just resort back to the movie Color Purple, okay? But with all that being said, I'm wishing y'all much love on your journey. And hopefully, hopefully this message is out there to help someone um, on their journey um, to navigate doing these energies as they take come about. So I am just here to help give you the message of what energies we're in right now, um, whether you want to say it's prophetic message whether you want to say intuitive messages but it's just a, just the messages that i get and i'm just here to share that so um with all that being said i'm wishing you all much love and much light on your journey until next time i say namaste and peace and blessings